Hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Craig Cipolla. I'm the Veterano Curator of North American Archaeology here at the ROM. And today, I'm really excited to join you to talk about a mysterious and beautiful set of artifacts that archaeologists call bird stones. Uh, they're interested in these things because, <clears throat> well, first of all, they look like animals. Most people, some people think they look like birds. You might disagree. That's OK. Uh, but you can see they have ears or eyes. They have a tail. They have a snout. Um, and these objects have been debated for a very long time, for 100, 150 years by archaeologists. And the one thing that they agree upon, we know, these were made by indigenous peoples between about 2,500 years ago and 1,200 years ago. Uh, and, and they're very common here across the Great Lakes region. Now, as archaeologists discuss these things over the last 100, 150 years, they discuss various different ideas about what these things are. Some people thought they were markers of uh, elite status. So you would have one of these things either wearing it on your body, or you would have it on a staff or something to mark yourself as special and different from the rest of the people around you. Uh, that's one idea. Other people think of these things as gendered objects. So women might have worn these in relation to pregnancy and fertility. That's a possibility, I suppose. Um, and still other people think that these were actually part of spear throwers or atlatls, which I'm going to show you in one moment. Uh, and we're actually at the ROM right now. What we're trying to do is test some of these ideas out. And the first thing we're doing is we're going to look very closely at each individual stone. And we're going to document all the wear and tear on these stones. This one doesn't have much wear and tear. It's probably not a good example. But you can see this one, it's missing a tail. Uh, others are missing heads. There's a lot of scratching on them. Um, these things were used. Uh, had hard use at some point in their lives. So we need to explain that. That doesn't really fit with the whole marking elite status or marking fertility or something. These actually were used in some kind of hard usage. And so maybe the spear thrower idea might work in that sense. So what we're doing is we're documenting all these different scratch patterns, break patterns, and we're, we're going to compare those to an experiment that we're doing on this side of things. Uh, so what we've done is we've actually had some people make us new bird stones. These bird stones were made in 2020 from the exact same type of stone that those bird stones, those, uh, those archaeological bird stones are made from. Uh, and what we are doing is we're attaching them to a spear thrower. This is an atlatl or spear thrower. It has a little hook or spur on this end. It has a handle that holds my fingers right here. And then most people think that bird stones were counterweights on these atlatls. So we put it in the counterweight position. And what we do is we hook a spear into it, and we throw this a lot. So if you see me around Toronto throwing spears, don't be scared. Come up and say hi. This is what we're doing. What we're doing is we're seeing what kind of wear and tear that makes on these stones. We see the pattern under there. We use a microscope to document that pattern. And we go and we compare it to these archaeological examples. So if those patterns that we're making, using it as a spear thrower, match up with these examples, archaeologically speaking, we'll know that we're right. These are part of spear throwers. What we're seeing so far seems to indicate that it's not that simple. These stones were probably used for much more than that. 